All right. How's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Thursday night, just about 10 p.m. here, local time, California time. That is March 13th, 2025 is the date. Uh, latest activity here on the earthquake 3D globe shows a 1.2 in the California. Also, uh, still got some movement there across the uh, Savart Singi area in Iceland. Just a real quick recap here. They got a pretty decent earthquake swarm going on here across the area, uh, just to the southwest of the uh, craters area. Now, of course, the craters area is where the last few eruptions have uh, taken place out there across the Savart Singi region, and it's just. Uh, just kind of continuing. 364 earthquakes out there in the last 24 hours, mainly offshore. Uh, but we do got to watch for some migration there uh, across the area. Eventually, that could work its way up towards the Grindavik area and the craters region. Right now, uh, specifically in that area of the craters, only a handful of smaller quakes, but no noticeable increasing movement. Uh, of course, the inflation here across the area is at a pretty much a greatest level uh, seen uh, in this series of um, eruptions here over the past, oh, since 2000, uh, end of 2023, uh, when it all began. So uh, the volume out here underneath the area is getting quite uh, amplified there for uh, soon to be an eruption, hopefully. I mean, it's, it's going to happen. Hopefully it's uh, just limited there to the craters area. All right, latest earthquake here on the USGS map, 4.8 off the coast here of Kamchatka, Russia. That earthquake about 39 miles deep here into the northern end of that subduction zone uh, earlier today here as well, a 4.6 towards the south here. So still got uh, some uh, worry about this maybe uh, capable. Well, it's, I know it's capable of producing some mega quake activity, but I feel like it's getting uh, much closer. If you look at the oceanic crust here, we got a major subduction zone that sits here in this region. Uh, really hasn't seen a major mega quake out here in quite a while. Down south here across Japan, yes, 2011, that nine pointer. But uh, up here along the Kuro Kamchatka, a little bit of time has passed. So I feel it's uh, probably close to getting ready to seeing a bigger quake. Up here across Alaska, still got some movement stirring up out here in northern Alaska. A lot going on here recently in the last seven days or so with a swarm of activity in the, the moderate size. Not uh, sure exactly where this is leading to here. No main quake. It's just an overall pattern of uh, some some elevated activity out there. Let's give a quick glance at this region. See what we got here for uh, historical data. Going to go 4.5 and above. And we're just going to look back here ways. And... Um, see what we got here for larger activity historically that is up here we know the subduction zone gets a lot of earthquake activity but uh, specifically up here let's take a little look see what's going on here and uh, earthquakes are loading I put in uh, 4.5 and above there's our newest quake up there in the uh, yellow largest magnitude within this area uh, looks to be a 6.5 back in 1928. Another six-pointer back in 1928 as well. Actually, three six-pointers up here. No, I take that back. <laughs> Better keep reading down. Four six-pointers back in 1928. A whole lot of happenings going on back there in the little cluster of big earthquakes. Uh, specifically around this area where we're looking at today. Looks like some fives and whatnot, but... Uh, Again, it's an overall pattern that's going on out here of elevated seismic events. And uh, they can get big. Obviously, uh, not as big as the uh, subduction zone quakes down here. But uh, I'll have to watch that because it's been quite amplified up there recently. Uh, across the Seattle area, starting to fill back in here across the area of the Seattle Fault. And uh, technically on both sides here to the north. Uh, on that note, let me double check the trimmer map here this evening. Uh, no trimmer up there across Seattle. That's interesting. Most of it's underneath the uh, Oregon area. But a uh, handful of smaller quakes up there around Seattle. Nothing of felt nature. Uh, Northern California. Only one earthquake being reported here. 2.5. Bay Area. A couple smaller quakes here from this morning. Nothing notable going on there. 1.3. That's along the uh, creeping section of the San Andreas Fault. 
Southern California looks pretty quiet right now. Not a whole lot going on. Earlier today, there was a three-pointer down here south of the border, just off the Imperial Fault. But uh, no migration up here to the north. Not really seeing anything of uh, much of anything as far as earthquake activity goes there across Southern California for now. Up into Montana, outside of Helena, a couple smaller quakes up there. Nothing big. Yellowstone, nothing. Let me uh, just double check that real quick. And, uh, yeah, there's not a whole lot going on. Pretty quiet out there across the, all the seismograph stations there at Yellowstone. There's one earthquake, it looks like, here. Very small. I mean, those are probably not even worth mentioning. Uh, still seeing some activity here across the Puerto Rico region. A bunch of two stirring up. Nothing big. Nothing big for now. Um, let me bring this back up here, the Earthquake 3D Globe. Uh, South America, we got a uh, five-pointer coming in underneath this area earlier this evening. That's going to be this one here underneath Peru. Well, it's actually a pretty shallow earthquake, six miles deep there. Uh, over the last seven days, a bunch of earthquake activity, including the super, super deep one here from two days ago. That uh, 401 miles deep into the subduction zone. Uh, almost immediately following this earthquake, we had some movement... Um, uh, that was previous, but I think it was down here. Maybe, uh, where did it go? Maybe it was some smaller earthquake activity. But uh, anyway, this five-pointer uh, that came in today is just pretty much upstream here from that deeper quake that happened into the subduction zone. So got to watch this area. It's uh, no doubt capable of producing some bigger, bigger earthquakes out there. Deeper quakes obviously leading to strain upstream. Uh, the Big Island of Hawaii out here. We've got uh, 3.2 stretching out towards the Loihi Seamount. Nothing big going on here. Looking at a pause in the eruption. Go ahead and double check that from the USGS site here. Kilauea Volcano. And um, just looks like we're going up here. The pause happened on uh, just about two days ago. Very short-lived eruption. This is a deformation data. Uh, obviously, if you look here, there's some wavy lines up and down. Well, each up motion here is the inflation leading up to an eruption, short-lived. That's deflation, and then leading back up to an eruption, and so on. And here we are continuing, just a rinse and repeat cycle out here. They're definitely uh, pretty much coming, becoming predictable out here in terms of the um, volcano eruptions here. That's uh, on the Big Island of Hawaii, Kilauea Volcano. Uh, let's see what else we got out here. New Zealand 3.1 just off the North Island coast, it looks like. A couple deeper quakes back into the Tonga Trench. Nothing going on here across the Papua New Guinea area, Solomon Islands. I gotta watch that. It's been awfully quiet. Has it been that quiet here? Let's see. When were these last two quakes here? It looks like on the 9th. Four days now of nothing. That's awfully odd. So watch this area. It's probably going to fill in uh, with at least a six-pointer here. It seems to always play that part uh, when it goes quiet for so long here, like we're seeing right now. Uh, Taiwan southward, typical crunch zone. That's just, I always say it because it's always on there, you know. If I skip it, someone's going to say, what about all the earthquake activity in between Taiwan and the uh, Philippines? That's always happening on any given day. Bunch of fours, bunch of threes. That is the crunch zone. I like to call it the crunch zone anyway. Not the official name. Uh, a couple earthquakes here across Nepal, westward along the plate boundary. That actually looks quite active out here. A bunch of quakes earlier, some fives and fours. A little bit more active than normal out there. Nothing big going on, but a uh, handful of noticeable quakes. 3.0 here across the... Uh, Almost looks like it's a Santorini area of Greece, so let's go double check that. And our station is offline still. No data available. I don't know what happened to it, but it's offline. So we'll use this one a little bit further from the earthquake swarming, but it's still there. Um, Three-pointer. Yeah, that one occurring fairly recent here, right in the middle of the mix of earthquake activity. I think that's our first three-pointer here in uh, a few days across the Santorini, Greece area. 
Still seeing, uh, you know, some good numbers out there, but they're going down slowly. 392 earthquakes in the last week. Um, let's give a quick glance at the recorded seismograph stations here from the geophysics site. And we'll run over here to the networks and just double check, see what that uh, well, three-pointer just came in. So it should be the largest quake there on the graph right there. Aside from that, some twos and some other quakes out there, but uh, just to wait and see what happens here. No escalation for now. The Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet across the board. Uh, space weather activity. I heard things were starting to fire up out here. Got a KP index, KP index of almost around the six level here uh, within the last couple hours. That uh, looks like it's calmed down now, though, as far as the aurora activity. But uh, it was somewhat elevated there, according to the uh, KP index. Maybe up to G1 storm here tonight, but uh, that may have already came in. So it looks like things are calming down. Got the uh, what, blood moon later tonight, I think. I'm not going to stay up for it. Most of the time I do. If it's earlier in the evening, I love catching the um, the shadow of the earth. Um, you know, pass over the moon. And uh, it's beautiful. If you catch it just right, uh, you get that kind of an orangish uh, red tint to it uh, in the shadow but uh, that's later tonight um, I don't remember exactly which time I think the peak totality there the moon starts at like 12 30 in the morning I, I don't want to stay up that late I got things I gotta do early in the morning so uh, good luck if you're one of the ones out there hey if you want to share your photo for all uh, the world to see here send them to earthmastermail at gmail.com and we'll show them here on the show tomorrow earthmastermail at gmail.com just let me know where you're at and maybe what kind of camera you use there uh, so aside from that flaring activity not a whole lot going on here look at the uv filter of the sun still watching this area out here on the eastern limb let's go ahead and take a look there at 4028 welcome there 4028 to the uh, earth facing side of the sun it's a uh, decent sized sunspot let's see if it's got any complexity here to it you know, I think it's one of those sunspots that have been around that, uh, that has came around numerous times. I don't recall the last couple numbers uh, that it was assigned to, but uh, I'm pretty certain it, lo it just looks the same as what it did last time around. Uh, it's 4028 down here. There's a little bit of complexity, not a whole lot, though. Almost looks like there's two separate cores here, but well, watch that area. Um really not too concerned with anything else here yet on the sun uh this area is starting to grow a little bit getting some interesting uh popcorn colors here in the central core that's a good sign of uh, maybe some growth and some complexity there within the magnetic structure of that sunspot so um i still got a one percent chance for flare and flare around 50 uh 50 percent chance that i forecasted these guys showing 40 just something i've done i've been looking at these uh sunspots for many years and uh, i figured i would include them in my forecast when it comes onto the live stream there so uh yeah aside from that uh man goodness got some severe weather lined up here tomorrow folks they've added a moderate risk uh that's just one level lower than the highest risk that the Storm Prediction Center issues out here for severe weather. This is a no-joke kind of day. Uh, got some big-time hail, big-time wind, and a huge tornado threat. So that's, uh, that's a big deal. No joke. Memphis, Tennessee, Jackson, Mississippi. That's all the way down there. Springfield, Springfield Illinois. Anywhere out here tomorrow. You know, I, I would uh, tonight before going to bed, if you're watching this update video or if it's in the morning, uh, make sure you got um, batteries in your weather radio. Make sure they're fully charged and and uh, just have your, you know, your um, storm shelter stuff ready. If it's not down there in the storm shelter already, just watch watch the radars. Listen to uh, the news and media out there. It's going to be a bad day. I think things are lining up out there uh, i'm hoping it's a bust the storm chasers like to call um days you know where no tornadoes take place as a bust 
but I consider those uh, a good day, right? Because um, none were produced out there. But tomorrow it's going to be a very interesting day. So that's for Friday. Um, on Saturday, that severe weather shifts much further to the south. That includes areas around New Orleans, um, Birmingham, Baton Rouge, uh, a lot of Alabama, Mobile, Alabama, goodness. Uh, and that's going to include some tornado threats as well. So just uh, be on guard, folks. A couple days of severe weather. That's thanks to this low pressure system here. Uh, just got through dumping some rain and snow here across California. That's going to stir up all this moisture and uh, bring in the severe weather potential there tomorrow and Saturday and then Sunday there along the East Coast. Back behind that, a little break it looks like. Maybe another low pressure system uh, middle to end of next week. Um, California, we're just getting... Uh, Storm system after storm system out here. I love it. Uh, you know, no severe weather, but uh, it's keeping everything green. A lot of uh, rain out here and a lot of snow in the mountains, so we need it. Uh, qu a quick glance here at the drought conditions. Let's see what we got here for uh, California drought. Right up here. There we go. So this is a current drought. Um, obviously, this area around Tennessee and whatnot is going to fill in uh, in terms of uh, removal of drought. This is at the surface level, a little bit deeper. California is uh, looking pretty nice out there right now. As far as the moisture anomaly, they're in the deeper areas and also at the surface levels. Quite moist out here. Um, and that's good. This is our winter time. This is our rainy season. After March, it starts getting dry, and then 110 comes along. Um, out there in Texas, goodness, these guys are uh, looking at some drought conditions starting to fill in. I'm sure eventually it will um, during the spring storms and summer, maybe monsoonal moisture that comes in there. Uh, anyway, folks, um, have yourself a good day. We will catch you guys, or good night, I should say. I'll catch you guys out here in the morning. Uh, by the way, I'm going to try to do the member drawing here tomorrow. Normally, we do it on the 15th, but I got a bunch of stuff here coming up on the 15th afterwards, so I'm going to do do it uh, the 14th here tomorrow for the member drawing. So I think we got about 75 members or so, and uh, we'll pick out a lucky winner. And then we'll go from there. So if you're not a member, to, if you're not a member, jump on board today here. We'll give away uh, some prizes there tomorrow to that lucky winner. Have a good night. We'll see you guys out here in the morning.